So Jane, new Hi. old friend, thank you so much Hi, for being honey. on Old Time Central. Thank you. It's good to see you again. The first round. Yeah, this is the second year, but the third time I've seen you. At, at, at least. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. That's yeah, true. So, happy Clifftop 2018. What day is it? Who cares? <laughs> Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Oh, this is day five. Is it all? Jesus. Yeah. For me. Right. So, the first question <clears throat> is, uh, how did you get into playing old time? Well, I was very fortunate because when I was five, I was growing up outside of New York City with my family, and my parents always into music, and my mom was kind of a folky pretty much when she was younger, I think. But we all went to New York for music lessons, and I got the Suzuki teacher. In fact, Louise Barron, who is my teacher, from what I understand, brought the Suzuki method over to America, and I was one of her first little tinies. At age? Five. Nice. So very, very lucky. I mean, it made a lot of sense because my... I have a twin brother who also was taking lessons, but they didn't give him the Suzuki teacher. They gave him the regular teacher. Just and, an experiment, one with well, that Well, you know, I asked my mom recently about this because <clears throat> I was always intrigued as to why I got the Suzuki teacher, but I realize now when they did their assessments, whatever they did, I don't really remember what that was, they probably went, oh, that regular <laughs> version, that regular way of teaching is not going to work for this one. Right. You know, so smart, right? So they were smart. So smart. Cool. So this was at Juilliard. So every Saturday we'd go in and had ballet lessons and did my Suzuki class and learned Twinkle Twinkle by ear. And right. My mom played the piano with me, so I guess I learned to, I never thought of this, I learned to jam at a young age. Right, right but you did. And um, yeah, so then I started playing fiddle music probably when I was about 13 because my sister Susie Thompson, she's a few, a few years older than me, I think four or four and a half maybe, she was <clears throat> playing in a bluegrass band and playing her fiddle and being a singer and a folk singer and stuff and so there was pretty early on there was that kind of music and when we moved to Connecticut when I was in fifth grade there was the Hartford Fiddle Contest mm -hmm. and bluegrass festivals mm -hmm. and fiddlers conventions right. and my brothers were in Doc Watson I mean it was just really it was uh, around it was around I mean I grew up in the in the you know North Carolina mountains but I grew up in a fertile place for traditional music in New England right and so so yeah, so I guess about 12, 13, I started playing fiddle music. Fiddle music. I went to the, my mom would take me to the Bristol Old Time Fiddlers Club in Bristol, Connecticut. A lot of French Canadian musicians mm -hmm. there. And, um, I go up there and play a tune, and um, I used to hang out with a, <laughs> an older fiddler who was probably younger than I am now, named Leo Baudouin from Canton, Connecticut, and he was a lovely. French Canadian fiddler, and he played with great tone and great lilt and a little kind of personality. I realize that's that's my wellspring. That inspired you, you mean? That was. What? I think it tempered everything that I a lot of what I do now. Yeah. Like at the beginning. Because it you got know? you hooked. That was like the person who got you hooked. Or? It got me hooked, but I heard this way of playing, which was, you know, rhythmic and but good tone and a lot of, you know, I guess that sort of swingy, groovy kind yeah. of thing that I've. That I have in my plan, right. if I trace it back, it's definitely to Leo Baudouin, right. which is it's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's a long story, longer short story. No, and now all <laughs> sudden, yeah. Now there are lots of years of playing old time. Yep, lots of years. I had a had a band when I was in high school and in college, and went to Scotland during my junior year at college. I met my husband Alan, who's a Scottish right. singer, and lived over there for a few years and back here and we went back you know I had a lot of experiences let's put that right. a lot of different kinds of music and I mean, old you, times my love yeah I was going to say because you can you play you play lots of different <clears> kinds <throat> of music why why keep coming back to old time what's different about old time then well I don't think I ever left it to be honest like when I went to Scotland I didn't go there to sc study Scottish fiddling wasn't really interested in it yeah. I was interested in this man that I'd met right. who was a Scottish singer right. so when we put our music together the rep the tune repertoire was always my repertoire right and then songs would be both of ours so i learned how to accompany a singer pretty early and you know it always played a bit of irish music and things like that but never really studied it i right. never really studied this music like well except when i was first learning playing tunes. it with other people and studying no it. I, I don't i don't know you, you never sat at home with a book and tried to oh uh, no i i remember listening to records over and over and over and over and over again playing right. along with those records 
But my my question was more why you can play all kinds of different kinds of music. Why? <clears throat> why, old why is old time the love? Oh, there's I mean, I mean the people. You know, part of the pleasure is meeting the people and getting to play music with those people. And, you know, it's it's just it's fun. Right. It's, it's diverse. There's so many different styles of American old time right. regionally, and right. I, I just, uh, I just, I love it. Nice. It's fun. And is there anything particular you're excited about right now? What are you excited about in your musical life right now? Oh, I, uh, you know, I've got a couple of things going. I've been doing a lot of touring in the <clears throat> in Europe the last couple of years with a duo I have called Hen's Teeth with Nathan Bontrange. Yeah. And the two of us met here at Clifftop probably maybe maybe seven years ago, maybe eight years ago. And we'd always sort of play at the festivals. And I remember distinctly, it was about three years ago, we were sitting and playing, and there was no one else playing with us. And we got to hear what we sounded like and, together. And I was like, oh, this is cool. So somehow we made it work so that we could uh, do some tours and did a recording. So, And I'm doing a lot of teaching. Starting, I have my own music camp right. that I put on in people's homes, and that's going really well. And, and now, how I'm many starting, times a year do you do that? Well, I've got, I've got, I do probably maybe two or three a year, depending on who wants to host. Right. But pretty, pretty much, uh, maybe two or three of them depends. I mean, I'd like to do more, so <laughs> call me. Right. Um, and uh, and that's been really fun. And also, I've started getting hired at other camps, which is right. making me feel really good because I love to teach and I can have magic powers. Right. You're good at you're good at bringing people in. I can speak vouch for that personally. Oh good, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love the travel. I love everything. <laughs> it's so much fun. Great. Um you gonna play a tune for us? Yeah, this is the first like tune after kind of raving last night here at Clifftop to quite late. I'm going to try and like lock off this raging jam that's going off over there. Right. And I'm going to play a tune uh, that I made up, which is really fun to play, called Waiting for Sandy. And I was inspired when the superstorm Sandy was racing up the east coast of America a number of years ago. And I was getting all nervous, and I was watching the Weather Channel. And finally, I turned off the Weather Channel and made up this tune. Okay. So I'll play it sort of that regular tilt, and then I'll take it apart a little bit and put it together again. Okay. that be good? Yeah. together here nothing sticking out <laughs> so what's it called again it's called waiting for sandy waiting for sandy okay, yeah. okay. ready here's it in d I made this up on the banjo
on. Yeah, definitely. So here's Waiting for Sandy. It's a tune that I made up, and it's in the key of D. It goes like this. Thank you. 